In the last video, we talked about two different types of covalent bonds. We had nonpolar covalent bonds, which were the product of equal valence electron sharing, and we had polar covalent bonds, which were the product of unequal valence electron sharing. And as a result of polar bonding, we ended up with molecules that had partial charges on opposite sides of the molecule and were therefore polar molecules. And I kind of hinted that there was a question that needed to be answered, which was why does this idea of polarity matter? Well, let's focus on water. Water is a very polar molecule and arguably the most biologically important molecule there is. Our bodies, and this is not unique to humans, it's true of pretty much all living things, our bodies are about 60% to 70% water by mass. We live in a medium of water. We have water on the inside, we have water inside our cells, we have water as the main component of our blood. If life exists in a medium of water, then this has got to be an important molecule, and it happens that it's a polar molecule. Well, let's shrink this down in the picture to make this easier to look at. And what I want to do is add another water molecule here and see what happens. Well, think back to what we've seen with ionic bonding. Opposites attract, same as repel. Well, in these two water molecules, there is a negative side and a positive side. And so we'd expect the negative side of one to be attracted to the positive of the other. Now, this isn't going to be an ionic bond, an ionic attraction, because these aren't fully charged particles. And remember, these partial charge zones aren't permanent. The electrons spend more time near oxygen than hydrogen within the oxygen, or within the water molecule. That means most of the time, the oxygen nucleus has more electrons around it than protons within it, but not 100% of the time. And in any moment in which electrons move over by the hydrogens, the negative charge from the oxygen vanishes and the positive charge from the hydrogen vanishes. But this weak attraction that results is what we call a hydrogen bond. A hydrogen bond is the attraction between hydrogen containing polar molecules and it's what we call an intermolecular force. Intermolecular, between, interbetween molecules. Not an intramolecular force, which is what a covalent bond is. An intramolecular force holds molecules together. An intermolecular force is an attraction between molecules. And so we see a hydrogen bond. And as we add water molecules to this mix, we see additional hydrogen bonds form. So if we get a bunch of water molecules together, they're going to get sticky with each other because of hydrogen bonding, because they're polar. A couple important facts about hydrogen bonds, about individual bonds. They're weak. I've already said this. They're not strong bonds, and they're transient. They're short-lived. They're weak because they're not full charges, and they're transient because whenever a zone of partial charge vanishes, the hydrogen bond associated with it should van vanish. But what that means then is in a case of water, hydrogen bonds are constantly breaking and reforming as the particles move around. Collectively, hydrogen bonds are very strong, and they account for all of the major properties of water, which we're going to look at in future videos. Okay, And realize... Water is not the only polar substance. Here we have sucrose, table sugar. And I've just added a bunch of partial charges to this picture. Every place on there where I've got a partial positive, partial negative, and I'm not even labeling all of them in this picture. But with all those partial charges, sucrose can hydrogen bond with water. Polar molecules can form hydrogen bonds with water so they can dissolve in water. It's so important whether something is polar or not because it dictates how it interacts with water. The term hydrophilic refers to these polar substances. Hydrophilic means water loving. Predominantly polar substance that is able to hydrogen bond with and dissolve in water is said to be hydrophilic. Oh, by the way, it's not just about polar substances. Ionic substances have full charges. Well, hang on. The full positive of sodium should be attracted to the weak partial negative on oxygen and the chloride negative should be attracted to the full, a weak partial positive on the hydrogens in water. Thus, you get a bunch of ions together with a bunch of water molecules, and they will interact with the hydrogen bonds. I'm sorry, with the uh, partial charges. Partial charges in polar molecules can also interact with ions. Therefore, ionic substances can dissolve in water. Methane, on the other hand, is nonpolar. It doesn't have zones of partial, polar, uh, partial charge. And so when we get a bunch of water molecules together, they can hydrogen bond with each other, they can stick to each other, they cannot stick to methane, 
and so they'll exclude methane, or rather methane will exclude itself from water because they can't form hydrogen bonds. Methane is a substance we say is hydrophobic or water-fearing. It's a predominantly nonpolar substance that is not able to hydrogen bond with and therefore does not dissolve easily in water. The bottom line is polarity matters because it determines how substances interact with water, and given that water is the medium of life, this is a big deal. Nonpolar molecules cannot hydrogen bond with water and therefore cannot dissolve easily. Hydrogen bonds are the attraction between hydrogen containing polar molecules. They are weak and they are transient. Hydrophilic substances are predominantly polar molecules that are able to hydrogen bond with and dissolve in water. Hydrophobic substances are predominantly nonpolar substances that are unable to dissolve in water because they are not able to hydrogen bond. And I'm going to leave you with this question for the next video. How do we tell if a substance is polar or nonpolar?